Hey there, YouTube fam. In today's video, we're diving into a powerful topic how to shut down a narcissist using a strict strategy. Have you ever felt manipulated, belittled, or controlled by someone who just wouldn't let you be yourself? If so, you're likely dealing with a narcissist. But don't worry, because today we're arming you with the tools and tactics you need to take control, set firm boundaries, and effectively shut down their toxic behavior. So, if you're ready to reclaim your power and stand strong against narcissistic manipulation, keep watching. Have you ever wondered why narcissists seem to thrive on drama and chaos, and how you can stop them in their tracks? Today, we're not just talking about dealing with narcissists, we're going to reveal a strict strategy that will make them think twice before crossing your boundaries. Stay tuned, like, because this could be the game changer you've been waiting for. Let's get started with understanding and unraveling this strict strategy. As for S, setting unshakable, unbreakable, and extreme boundaries. The strict strategy stands for setting unshakable, unbreakable, and extreme boundaries. Not just setting boundaries because narcissists see boundaries as a form of challenge, something they have to win, something they have to break one way or another, because it's all about an ego battle. It's not about amicability, there's no cooperation, no mutual understanding, no respect for you at all. It's all about winning. It is a war for them, and they see it as such. When you try to set boundaries or say, I don't want this and I don't want that, this isn't what I will accept, definitely they won't care. They would target the point where it hurts the most. So you have to set extreme boundaries. What does that look like? You have to be clear, extremely clear. You have to dig in the line, you don't have to draw the line. You have to dig in the line. You have to say, this is my area, this is my space, this is who I am, this is my identity, this is my truth, this is my reality, and that is yours, no trespassing is allowed. Which is why you have to be very careful by not leaving them any space to exploit these boundaries, and there should be no loopholes at all. You must set consequences if they break your boundaries, if they violate you, if they trespass, if they do something they shouldn't do. There should be consequences. I mean, I am inviting you to think in black and white, either you have to give them full access, and that is how it will work then, or you have to block all access. You have to set clear, firm, very strong boundaries, and if they breach any of those boundaries, there should be really bad consequences. Let's say it's your narcissistic parent who always ridicules you, your choices, your career, your romantic life, and so on. You have to be very clear and say, if you do this or say this one more time we talk, I'm done, I'm done, and when they do it, you have to be done with them. No matter what they do, no matter what they say about you to others, how they pretend to be a victim, and maybe they might feign a heart attack. It's okay you have to tolerate the distress that creates in your body, but you have to be done. If it is a co-parent that you're dealing with, and they focus on putting you down, belittling you, you have to use that and maybe file a motion or make them face the consequences for it. You have to be quite clear, cutthroat, blatant, to the point, and you have to leave no room for them to exploit you in any way. Number two, T, temper your emotions. The strict strategy stands for temper your emotions. Handle your emotions. When it comes to fighting a narcissist, in this context, you fight them on two fronts. One is internal and the other one is external. It all starts from the internal front. You cannot fight a narcissist if you're reactive, if your emotions are unmanageable, if you are angry, if there is unresolved resentment, if there is unresolved pain, because they will intentionally drag you into the battlefield, a battlefield that is manipulated by them, set by them, and you're doomed to fail. Because they will make you react. They will say things intentionally to trigger you, and you will react. And that means you will lose the battle. Why? Because narcissists want control. It doesn't matter if you react positively or negatively, as long as you react, the game is in their hands. So you've got to work on your internal aspect of healing. You've got to work on your wounds. I have been saying this, and I can't emphasize it enough. Especially, you've got to learn how to stay in a calm, regulated, relaxed body. You've got to know how to think when you face a narcissist, when the conversation is happening, instead of just acting on impulses. You've got to know how to apply the brain, how to use your executive functioning to strategically respond or to strategically pinpoint the loopholes, things that you can use against them. You can't take the bait. You can't just react and expect that they will just be scared by it. Of course not. They'll be happy. It will be joyful for them to see you suffer and it will be really, really satisfying for them to make you give reactions to their actions. The third R, recognize the tactics. From the strict strategy, R stands for recognize the tactics. 
Now, narcissists have patterns to their behavior. They use certain tactics depending on the type they are covert, overt, malignant, grandiose. They use certain tactics to try to punish you. You have to become really objective, and this is only possible when you have worked on the internal front. Once you're objective, once you are in control of your emotions, you have to objectively but dispassionately observe how they are trying to attack you. Is it through your children they are trying to get to you? Are they running a smear campaign? What are they exactly trying to do? What are the points, the risk points? Where could they possibly cause the maximum harm? Because once you recognize your enemy, once you see your enemy, it no longer stays an enemy. Now you have the power. The key to change is awareness. You have to observe if they are guilt-tripping you, using your sense of obligation against you, if they're your parent, using your empathy for them against you. Whatever it is that you find they are weaponizing against you, you have to then work on that front. You have to work on your emotions, if it is guilt, if it is obligation, and you have to heal those wounds. If it is your children they are using as pawns, you have to develop a relationship strong enough with them so that you can help them recognize that they are being used and then you help them take a stand for themselves. You help them see the situation for what it is. You won't be able to correct their thoughts, their feelings, their behavior unless you recognize how they are being weaponized. So, recognizing their tactics, the different ways they are trying to attack you is crucial, the first step before you do something about it. Fourth one, I, ignore attention-seeking behavior. From the strict strategy, I stands for ignore attention-seeking behavior. You know by now your attention is fuel for the narcissist, and when co-parenting they just have to impact you because they love the fact that they are still in your life. They can't see you separating individually, they can't see you growing, outgrowing them. That is death to their ego, they might send a 3,000 word long email berating you, humiliating you, passing subtle remarks, saying things that make you feel weird, that make you feel bad, all of that has to be ignored. And you will have to learn how to focus on the thing that matters. Focus on the thing that you're obliged to respond to. For example, if there is a part of the email or the message that asks you about the timing, when will you pick up the child, or when will you drop the child, whatever it is, you have to just answer that. That's it. Rest, thank you, I don't have to talk about that. It's not my problem. It's not my circus. I'm not going to be a part of it. Just ignore it, and that will kill them. If they are running massive smear campaigns against you, do not justify yourself. Do not defend yourself. Do not explain yourself. Whomever they go to and try to bring on their side, just let them do it. Because this is a filtration process, this is a screening process. Those who truly desire to be in your life will be filtered out very naturally. Because those who truly love you won't just believe the narcissist, they will come to you, seek clarification, ask questions, and then judge on the basis of that. So you have to ignore the attention-seeking behavior. Whatever they do, just don't be bothered by it. Even if you're bothered by it, act as if you're not, because they shouldn't know they're able to impact you emotionally, process all the trauma, all that crazy confusion, all that stress, all that anxiety they hit you with in your therapy sessions, or with your friend, whomever can help you in the process, but do not show them you are getting impacted by their behavior. Number five, C, challenge their narrative. C from the strict strategy stands for challenge their narrative, challenge their gaslighting. I just suggested that you should ignore them, you shouldn't be bothered, just leave them where they are because you don't want to be a part of their drama. But at the same time, you have to choose to speak up because you can't stay silent all the time. They can go on and say stuff about you that is far, far from reality, blatant lies. It is at that point you have to prove that they are a liar through pointing out patterns and pointing out facts. Eventually, if they claim they are an amazing parent, a perfect parent, you have to bring up the times when they were not a perfect parent, when they abused you, abandoned you, neglected you, intentionally put you in harm's way. Of course, you're not explaining things to them, you're just pointing out facts. You should be a fact machine, that's it. You are bringing out facts just to slay them. And that too, when it matters, maybe in a legal situation, maybe when other people are involved, maybe when doing that would lead to a positive outcome. Otherwise, if it leads to nothing and they just want supply, don't do it. If it is a narcissistic co-parent who claims to be a great, amazing parent who is taking care of everything, you have everything documented. And if I forgot to say, you must document every single thing, every single conversation, because documentation will do two things. It will help you stay on track and it will help you recognize who they are too. 
It will help you compile evidence and proof against them so you can use that evidence to prove that they are a liar. You are the only parent who has been present consistently, and they haven't been, and they have miserably failed so many times on different fronts when it comes to properly taking care of the child, providing child support, and doing things they're supposed to do as a parent. Number six, and the last one, T, take absolute control of your life. I cannot emphasize enough that you've got to heal. Yes, I said it earlier, I am saying it again, you've got to heal. But when it comes to taking control, you have to take control of the narrative. The narcissist wants you to stay in a constant state of fear and shame. They want you to be terrified of their presence. So you've got to work on your body language, on your communication style. You have to notice how you are acting when around them, and you have to work on yourself accordingly. If you're looking down, going into a fetal position, your body is tight, you're shaking and trembling, they read you. They read you like a book. They know they can feed on you and that you're still afraid of them. So, you have to work enough to appear confident, to look them in the eye and just slay them. Just tell them who's the boss, not in a narcissistic way, but to tell them, no, you can't mess with me. I see who you are. I see through you. It doesn't matter if the communication happens directly or indirectly, in all ways imaginable and possible, take the control back. Release that fear. Work on your communication style. Work on how you present yourself, especially when they are there. Observe what communication patterns you've gotten used to. Because when dealing with a narcissist, what do you do? You explain yourself, you defend yourself, but that doesn't work. You know that, especially in a setting where only facts matter. You've got to know how to just point out facts, how to be calm while speaking, how to look them in the eye, and how to appear as the sane one. Because you are the sane one. They have painted a picture. The picture says you are the crazy one. And if you do not work on your internal wounds, they will use that picture of yours to prove to other people who are in authority and make them see what doesn't exist. You've got to get yourself centered. You've got to dig your heels deep in your truth. You've got to learn how to take a stand for yourself, how to protect your children, and you've got to have strong boundaries and do all the other things that I suggested earlier. That was it for today's episode. I hope you found it insightful. If you did, let me know in the comments. Share this episode with others. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin.